I've shared a dream a few times over the last uh, couple of months that have to do with the river. And I've been meditating on different passages today about rivers and wells and water. Because I know God's trying, he's, he wants to say something to us about that. You know, I, I, when, when, when themes start becoming reoccurring themes, and especially in different places, when different people in different places start hearing the same thing, then you know God's trying to get our attention to say something about that that is probably more than we have previously understood. I mean, you know, we go from glory to glory. And we go from revelation to revelation. The path of the righteous is what? Brighter and brighter till the full day. And I believe we are moving into a season that will, um, will be marked by very high levels of revelation. I believe the prophetic anointing will go to a new level. And I believe that not only will the prophets go to, to a new level, but I believe the body of Christ will become more prophetic as a whole. I believe the up and coming generation of young people, and to me that's like, you know, young is, young is older all the time. So that's like 40 on down now to me. I believe they are the most prophetic generation that's ever lived. I don't think they know it yet. I believe they are because, well, obviously the purposes of God, but I believe they, because they were born into a time when the prophetic anointing was being re restored. I believe that went into their DNA. So I believe they, as they come into the kingdom, they will, uh, they will find themselves beginning to come alive prophetically. A lot of them won't even know what that is. It's going to be a wonderful thing. Many of them will be prophetic evangelists. But even pastors, they'll be prophetic pastors and prophetic teachers and prophetic apostles and prophetic carpenters and prophetic lawyers and <laughs> prophetic doctors. And so I believe we're, we, we are, I believe we're about to experience another level of the river. So I'm glad Randy went there. Ezekiel 47. I think I've shared this once before here. I'm going to do it quickly, this, this word. But the word river in Ezekiel 47 is not the typical word for river. It is the word naka, which literally means a winter torrent. A winter torrent or a winter river. But it's not called a winter river because it flows in winter. It's called a winter river because it's created by river or by winter. It's the ice and snow melt in the spring that starts in the mountains. And as the thaw begins, the water becomes, you know, first a little rivulet and then it's ankle deep. If you've ever been in the mountains in the springtime, I've lived in Colorado for 20 years, I have seen Ezekiel 47. Because when it begins to warm up, you go up on the side of a mountain, you see these little things running down the mountain, ankle deep. But down the way a little bit, several of them come together and now they're knee deep. Some of those come together, the lower they get and it's waist deep stream and by the time you get to the bottom of the mountain it's a rushing river it's all snow milk 
So he's saying in that passage, I'm, I'm causing the spring thaw to begin. And the the level is rising. I'm going to do something. I'll do a little play on words for a minute because I don't know where I'm going with this message. I'm trying to navigate my way through this. I'm I'm like a beagle right now. Because I know I'm on a trail, but I'm trying to figure out where he wants to go with this. There's a fascinating word in Hebrew, abar. And it means Hebrew. Abraham, sure. I don't want you touching me back there. (laughs) No, No, stick in your hand, my back pocket. Oh, for the glory. Okay. And I don't need these monitors, so if you cut those off, that'll help a little bit. That's some of the feedback up here. Um, this, when, it, when, it, when uh, Genesis, in the book of Genesis, it calls Abraham a Hebrew, it's the word Abar. We're never told why God called him that. It just said Abraham, the Hebrew. The word means to cross over or to cross out of or can even mean to cross into. It means to go from one place to another and penetrate a new place. It's actually one of the words for impregnate because it means penetrate. Sometimes I'm convinced that when it is used to describe the word of the Lord coming to someone and, for example, God passed by them, a better translation would be he impregnated them with his words. But in this passage, and I mean, I did a, this word is so fascinating. I I once did, I think it was a 10-week series on the word abar and how it's used in the scriptures. Because even when it's used and translated cross over, it's often very significant. And God was saying about Abraham, one of the things that has touched my heart about this man is the fact that he's willing to cross over to the other side. When I said go, Even when he didn't know where he was going, he left. He became, to me, the Hebrew, the one who crosses over. But fascinating, back to Ezekiel 47, every level of the river, we're told, when it got ankle deep, he led the prophet through it. That's a bar. He put him into the river and made him cross, cross it. Did he? Did he sit in it? Did he walk through it? Did he stand in it? We don't know, but we know he had to get in it. Every level, be a Hebrew. Every level, immerse yourself into this water. I think he does that because at some point, if we get in the river enough, the river gets in us. When I had the vision that led to writing the book that Randy talked about, The River of God, one of the things the Lord did was hold me under the water. He held me under the water for a while until I couldn't hold my breath any longer, and I swallowed a bunch of the river. And I expected to cough and gag and choke But when the water went into me, it went all through my body and brought refreshing and healing to my body because everywhere the river goes, 
everything lives. So I think God is saying to us, I am increasing the level of the river right now, and I need for you to get in it. I need for you to do that through worship. I need for you to do that through the word. I need you to, to, to make sure that you honor and host my presence. That's getting in the river. That's being a Hebrew. That's allowing the river to get in you, penetrate you, so that you become pregnant with the river. I'm just, you know, can't, is it okay to use that play on words? It's going to birth, it's going to birth something in you. 